Yeah, hi, I'm Bart Massey. I uh, wanted to, uh, one of the nice things about having a slot right before lunch is that I don't think it's possible that I can go too short. Um, but I did want to have a brief discussion. That's why you got the slot, actually. Yeah, excellent, <laughs> perfect. And, and I did want, but I did want to have a very brief discussion about uh, what we want to do with, uh, with uh, the application side and about programming languages. And this is, you know, my usual talk, I pretty much know what I want to tell people and it's a matter of telling it. I think this is not that talk. Um, this is a talk in which I'm really more asking some questions that um, are of interest to me that I've been thinking about. I want to share some of my thinking over the past mm, 10 or 20 years <laughs> about how we build applications for the desktop. I, I think it's a time in which it's uh, more critical than ever that we figure some of this out, that we have, we've had a lot of struggles. I know that you know, I'm talking to a room full of uh, sort of server side <laughs> and infrastructure people, and maybe this isn't the right conference to even have this conversation, except that to some extent we are, you know, it's easy to forget, I think sometimes, that what we're building ultimately is a platform for things to run on. I mean, we can make benchmarks go faster and make things more efficient and use cooler, newer hardware and everything else, and that's important. It's really super important. But at the end of the day, if we don't have actual working um, applications running on top that people want to use and that people know how to write, um, then we are pretty much out of luck for the rest of this stuff. Um, so. Ah, sorry. So um, the question I want to pose is this: It's to what extent is it? Hey, yeah, is is it that what's really important is the choice of programming language um, in making us be able to build desktop apps easier? And oh, now I've lost my mouse pointer. That's great. Really? Oh, there it is. Okay, I need to change my cursor set. And here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry about all that. Um, the uh, you know we've got to the point, and I don't know how we did this, where I think it's harder to write a desktop app than a mobile app or a web app, and that seems kind of crazy, right? It seems like it ought to be the other way around. And further, I think if you look at the interaction experience that people have with desktop apps, the ease they have of installing, using, working with them, um, the quality of code, the quality of everything. I think that in a lot of cases we find that the quality of the apps are worse than mobile or web apps. And so the question that comes to mind is how did we get here? How did we do it this badly and what can we do about it? And my proposal is that there's a bunch of reasons how, why this could happen, but you know, the, and some of them are sort of not the fault of anything that we have done as a community. And I should be real clear here, when I say we, I really mean not just X. I mean, this is a problem that's endemic to X, Windows, Mac. You know, pick your favorite environment in which desktop applications live. Um, the, you know, first of all, I think you know, the, the, the ambition is a lot higher in the application space. We, we try to tackle a lot bigger, more complicated applications in the desktop environment than we do with web or mobile. Um, the requirements, there's, there's a lot more things we ask a desktop application to do. We ask it to do things like manage storage in sophisticated ways. We ask it to do things that involve very sophisticated kinds of interaction. Um, we expect it to support internationalization and customizability and configuration in ways that we wouldn't necessarily ever expect on in these other environments. Obviously we expect, we hope, that a desktop app will work cross environment. Those are all things we can't help. They're all things we're sort of stuck with. Um, programming language, I think, also has an impact and it's something we do have a choice of. At the end of the day, we can choose how we build out our infrastructure. And in one of those engineering choices, although maybe not the only one, is what language do we actually use? And so I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. 
I can't say I have answers or conclusions. Um, let's start by sort of talking about if, if we accept this premise that web and mobile are interesting things to look at. Well, you know, how are the languages that they use different than the languages that we use in uh, the desktop space? Um, you know, well, first of all, the language almost exclusively is not C for these things, right? Um, you know, I think, and I think there are some obvious reasons why this is probably not a good deal. I guess, you know, in the mobile environment, there's Objective C, um, which is kind of C thing, uh, but uh, but nobody uses C or C++ to write web or mobile apps. Um, nobody's a strong statement, I understand, but but um, it's not the norm, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, obviously you can't say nobody does anything. I'm sure there's a web, out, web app and a mobile app out there written in, uh, I don't know, common list, but, uh, <laughs> but it isn't something you would choose to do. Um, you know, the, the, the programming language feature set that these things use is really interesting to me. I mean, uh, me automated memory management is pretty much a requirement. Um, nobody, nobody writes on the web and mobile anymore in languages that don't have automated memory management um, that allow um, pointer errors, blah, 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 pretty much. Um, because these things are so well known to be difficult for mere mortal programmers. Um, obviously, it's con viewed to be very important that we have object-oriented programming. Um, obviously, these languages mostly support late binding, um, dynamic loading, some things like that. And so if we were going to say, well, we want our applications programming environment for the desktop to be more like these in terms of programming language, you know, we might choose to do what a lot of people are doing and build in things like JavaScript and HTML5, or at least in Python or uh, Ruby, you know, languages that have these properties. And I'm going to, I actually have some questions about whether that's the right way to go. But it's sort of easy to see when you stare at them why these kinds of languages might be attractive to developers um, who are, frankly, and I think I can say that bluntly in this room, um, on average, very much less skilled than anybody in here at application development. Um, we don't expect in the web and mobile environments nearly such a high bar um, in terms of technology to get started. And that's one of the reasons why we get apps in those environments in a reasonable time frame that actually work. Uh, I think in a, in, a dyna in a quickly changing environment like the web and mobile space, I think it's important that um, people be able to throw things together quickly that kind of work. And um, it's hard in the desktop space, in the X desktop space, or in any of the desktop spaces to sort of throw something quickly together that kind of works. We've made that a difficult thing to do. And so one interesting question, programming language-wise, that all this brings up is that, um, you know, domain-specific features for development of GUI applications, um, you know, is something that's really interesting. One of the nice things about some of these languages that are used in the web and mobile space is that they are sort of dynamically tweakable um, in ways that C just isn't to support building customized sort of new you know, domain-specific elements for the language so that you can do things like internationalization as an obvious example without you know, having to build a whole bunch of infrastructure to do it. Um, on the other hand, these languages often have terrible modularity. Um, if you build a language that, if you pick a language that's designed for throwing together wads of code really quickly, um, and maybe you aren't so skilled, you often end up with kind of a mess. Um, and so the maintainability and that kind of scalability go down. Um, one real common pattern, and I think this is unquestionably a good idea, is that there are a few mega apps in these spaces. There are a few apps with, you know, all of Lotus 1, 2, 3 in them. Um, you know, the, the, we, we long time ago in the desktop space got on this path where we seemed to decide that the right thing was to take every piece of functionality we ever could think of and put it in a single application. Um, in the web and mobile spaces, not so much. And you know, one of the consequences of that is that um, the demands on the language and on everything else go way, way down. Just very briefly, here's some of the 
kinds of issues that I think we want to think about when we're tr thinking about what to do about de desktop programming languages. Um, obviously, they're the correctness issues. Um, we want apps that don't crash. We want apps that don't behave in strange ways that the users can't figure out. Um, I think one of the things that's been hurting us for a long time is <sighs> GUIs are naturally concurrent. Um, you know, the, the user, at the very least, is doing things concurrently with the CPU. Um, and in fact, you know, there may be activities concurrently happening over the network, ap activities concurrently happening of other kinds. There are several reasons to want to have threads and, or something like them. And one is because you want efficiency. I don't think that matters so much here. But the other is because you're working with an environment that's naturally concurrent. And C, C++, you know, it has thread support now, but it's, nobody would claim it's easy to use. Nobody would claim that it works very well. Our locking and synchronization issues are very hard. The people in this room can build threaded programs for the most part. I think George, an average developer, maybe not so much in C. Oh, so, you know, that's a real concern. Um, callbacks and other kinds of complicated control flow. Um, are you know some of the issues that come out of this set of concerns? We need to have proper automated memory management. I think it's clear that, again, the people in this room can probably do the right thing with malloc and free most of the time. The average application developer just can't. If you go look at the memory traces from any application running not just in X but on Mac, on Windows, whatever, and look at what's going on, it's like, oh yeah, that's screwed up all the time. It's too hard. So we have to help. And yes, there are things that can go wrong with automated memory management also, but it turns out in practice that they aren't as bad. Um, we really, one of the, skipping ahead a little bit, one of the things that we really need to care about is that more and more um, users are expecting direct manipulation. Um, they're expecting to be able, in the web space or the mobile space, they've gotten used to the idea that they can grab things and move them around, that they get renderings of things that are you know, the thing they want to do, look at. The idea of this, this 80s idea of building an application by gluing together text boxes and buttons and similar widgets, it's going away, and nobody's going to call that acceptable anymore. That should be a feature for the desktop app space, because we have everything right in front of us to do that there. We have basically unlimited resources. We have very low latencies. We have um, very nice hardware um, to handle all this. And yet, somehow, our apps on the desktop are terrible. You know, they don't do that. And yet, the web and mobile apps do. Even the web apps do, right? I can sit there and grab my Google map and throw it around, scroll throw it, you know, throw scroll it around and click on it and things pop up and, you know, draw little drawings of pins and that kind of thing. I mean, you know, if I can do this through a browser, why does my desktop app not do the same thing? Well, it just doesn't. And I'm going to claim that the programming languages are one of the things getting in our way. In particular, um, our systems, if you look at how toolkits use do this kind of stuff, right? We have this widget mentality in the desktop space, which is probably a very good mid mentality. That, you know, modular, we, we get modularity by creating widgets for everything we want to do. Well, the problem is that the desktop toolkits pretty uniformly make widget creation a total pain in the neck. Um, and the amount of boilerplate code and weird interactions that you have to do to get a direct manipulation widget written for the desktop is typically very large. I've written in a dozen of these systems, and I've found very few in which there's anything natural at all about building, you know, even a simple widget, a, a fuel gauge or whatever, you know, simple thing. It's, it's a lot of work. And I think that's partly because the language um, doesn't give you convenient ways to express some of the concepts you need to express. That's my belief. Um, obviously, configuration management is something that the language could help with, but um, typically doesn't. What are our choices, right? I mean, the choices are large, right? There's probably 400 languages in reasonably wide use right now. Um, in principle, we could use any of them, right? And one of the open questions that I think we should all think about is, you know, how much do we care about a language being mainstream? 
there's some really big advantages to using mainstream language in terms of getting access to a larger developer base, in terms of increasing the comfort, in terms of the amount of support that's available for them. Um, so, you know, really at the end of the day, C and C++ are there as the primary languages we write in for the X desktop because they've always been there and because of that they're very popular. Um, you know, people think they know what's going on with them. Um, the other obvious choices are Java and conceivably C Sharp, although it's not obvious to me, as I think it's not obvious to most people, what advantages C Sharp offers over Java here that matter enough, given that we have good quality working Java.